Today we're going to be turning this pile of junk into this awesome mobile portable FM antenna for your transmitter and this magnet is going to be the base. Where does this come from? It comes from a horn tweeter speaker from a sort of mobile disco PA system speaker but we just want the magnet part so we have to remove that from the horn. So very carefully without breaking the neck on the magnet because you want to keep that small neck you just want to remove the horn part so very carefully with a bit of skill and a bit of effort, remove that horn so that you keep the magnet with that little neck. Now using a screwdriver, you want to remove all those screws because you need to get the coil inside and get that out because that's the coil that makes the sound in the tweeter, but you don't need that for this antenna. So we're going to take that out, but we do need the spacer, the plastic spacer inside. So inside you can see there is the coil. So we need to remove that very easily. Just push your finger through, just take that coil out, but keep the plastic spacer intact. Now you can see that plastic space is not the neatest thing, it's been broken off there. So you just want to clean that up. You can use a pair of pliers, just uh, break off those ends, make it nice and neat. Now be careful not to break the spacer itself, just very carefully wiggle it till you can get those pieces off till the spacer looks nice and neat and then it has to fit back onto the magnet. Now make sure it goes the right way around with the holes in the right place for the screws to fit through properly because you need that to go all back together again. Then the neck of the base is going to go on top there. Now, this is a telescopic antenna which you can get from toys or radio control toys or from an FM portable radio and you need it to have a screw hole at the bottom and you need a screw to go in there. So you'll have to find yourself a screw with the right thread that will be able to fit in there and it needs to fit all the way up to the end because it needs to make a nice tight fit where the cable is going to be joined on there. So I've sped this up so you can see that the screw has to make it all the way to the end so it mustn't be too long. Now the problem is the hole is too big so the antenna just flops around inside there so we need something to fill in that space like a piece of wood or something because it needs to hold that antenna inside that neck so we can connect to it so we need to find something. So I dug through my junk box and I found this. This is a speak on connector that goes on the back of a PA system or disco speaker which connects your amp to your speaker. This is a, a one that's been removed so I figured great the hole is just about right for this antenna if we just drill it out and uh, it looks like it'll fit in there not perfectly snugly but it fits quite nicely into the neck so I figured that could actually work. So all I really got to do is remove those connectors on the back there and uh, drill that hole a bit bigger so that I can fit the antenna inside but it does look like it fits quite nicely. Now please use your drill more safely than I did I was doing this just so that you can see it on the camera, but please be more safe. But eventually you'll get through that plastic with the drill uh, to get a nice clean hole. And uh, you'll have to keep doing it until you get a nice fit. Obviously you want it to be a snug fit. You don't want it to wobble around, but eventually you'll get a nice fit. Now, as I was doing this though, I found the hole was great. But as I was pulling the connectors off, I discovered a huge problem is that the whole thing seemed to be falling apart. So I thought, okay, this is a disaster. But I kept pulling on the connectors and uh, eventually when they were all I discovered the plastic inside was actually pretty good it's pretty solid so it didn't actually matter that that piece had broken off so I managed to get the antenna in through that hole nice and tight now I've sped this up as well because it's a really snug fit so it took quite a while to push that antenna all the way through but you that's what you want you want to have a nice snug fit so that it's pushed all the way through and it holds tightly that just the screw sticks out the end and you can see that fits nicely into the neck of the antenna or at least the neck of the base. Now we need to make a hole in the side where we can push the coaxial cable through because that's where it's going to join on to the antenna and then uh, as well onto the base. So you have to find the right spot, the most appropriate spot, but almost any spot will do as long as it can reach in nicely from the outside. Now I've drilled this through. I didn't film the drill drilling, but you can see all the bits of plastic. I drilled the hole through so that uh, gives you that space to push the cable through. So that's exactly what we'll do. Push the coaxial cable through the side so that it goes to the inside. And it has to be about that long because you need the braiding to be able to touch onto the magnet because that's going to be your ground plane in a way of your antenna and the center part you need to touch on the top. Now you need to pull the plastic off. Don't cut it like say, rather cut a piece off and then pull it off because you don't want to damage the cable. So just get a nice piece that you can grab onto and then just pull on it so that you can get a nice length like I showed where the braiding can touch. So I've sped this up as well. So you can see this uh, uh, gives you a piece about that long which you're gonna need to connect 
to the braiding to the base. Now, once again, just roll it on the blade. Don't cut it because you don't want to damage the cable. Just get a nice finish. And then this part I've sped up as well because it's really tedious. You have to pull back all the braiding so that it forms one piece of cable, but it takes forever till eventually get that piece. And then you're gonna have to neaten that up as well. Just twist it up till it forms a kind of its own cable and then you are going to have to cut that part because it's too long but you can see basically that's going to fit through the side and then we are going to join that part you can see the white plastic which is the center of the coaxial cable that's going to join onto the screw where the braid is going to join onto the magnet so we have to cut that center part but shorter but before we do that we have to push the cable all the way through because we're going to be working through on the other side because it's very difficult to work through the bottom so we are going to push the cable all the way through through the hole and then cut a piece off the top so be sure to cut the right length I've just uh, cut a decent length off there and what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove some of the plastic so that you've got some of the center of the coaxial cable exposed once again just roll it on the blade don't cut it because you don't want to damage the cable just pull the plastic off and then clean up or just twist up that uh, piece of cable so you've got it nice and clean and that's going to join onto the screw that you can see that's sticking out of the antenna now. Now you could be fancy and put an eyelet on there but seeing as we're going cheap and cheerful for this video all we're going to do is we're going to twist that wire onto that screw and then we're going to tighten the screw up. Uh, so not super professional but uh, the idea is to make this uh, cheap and homemade and so you can see that the screw goes through that hole which could have been an eyelet or just the wire twisted around. Then I've sped this up as well but you're going to see you can basically just put that screw tightened onto it. Now before we do that though we need to insulate the two wires because we don't want the braiding to touch the center because that will short it out and damage your transmitter. So we need to insulate that with a good old piece of insulation tape. Once again you could be fancy and uh, use a bit of uh, heat shrink but in this case once again cheap and cheerful just using some good old fashioned insulation tape uh, but all the all you really have to do is insulate those two wires from each other because you don't want that braiding to touch on. I've sped this up as well so you don't see me fumbling around with some insulation tape but in the end you end up with those two wires being separated by the insulation tape. Then you can put the screw back on and sped this up once again and you need to get that tightened right up so it's a nice snug fit and then you need to tighten that screw as well so that that wire doesn't come off. So just using a screwdriver make that nice and tight and uh, then you've got that tightened on. Now what you have to do is you need to remove all those furry bits that are sticking out because those little bits of wire sticking out can also short out the uh, the cable and also blow your transmitter. Make sure that there's no bits sticking out there. Now what you have to do is push all these cables and bits and pieces back through the hole because now the braiding has to go to the bottom. This you have to use a lot of patience with. Uh, don't rush this because you could snap that cable off the top part of the antenna. So take your time just very carefully push it through, wiggle it through it slowly because you don't want to snap that cable off. Eventually you'll get it to fit through nicely and uh, you'll have that sitting nice and comfortably there with the braiding part sticking out through the bottom and you've got the uh, top part of the, the plastic sticking through the neck nice and comfortably. Now the braiding of the cable needs to touch onto the metal of the magnet because that's going to be the base of your antenna and to do that basically what you're going to do is you're going to take a screw that was one of the three screws holding that neck on and that piece of braiding is going to go around that screw. So first you take the spacer put that over because you're going to need that spacer but make sure you put that over first before you put the cable otherwise it's going to not connect to the base. So once you put that spacer onto the plastic neck you're going to pull this wire over. I've sped this up as well because it is a bit tedious also just trying to get this little wire to make a, a bit of a hook on there. You can see sped up there and then you very carefully have to put that onto the magnet making sure once again that the holes are in the right place so that everything lines up and making sure that that braiding is touching onto the magnet and making sure you've got all that lined up you're gonna to have to put all the screws back in just wiggle around till you've got it in exactly the right spot and then uh, once again I've sped this up so that you don't have to watch me putting all the screws in but you have to put all of that back together again making sure that it doesn't slip out of place that that braiding doesn't move and uh, bits fall out make sure that uh, everything's in place tighten up the screws 
screws and then you are pretty way along in making this antenna. A couple of things we still need to do is uh, put this connector onto the end of the cable. This is a PL259 connector assuming you have that on your transmitter uh, but you have to make sure that this cable matches onto that connector properly so we're going to cut the ends of that so that the bit fits through make sure that you use the right connector for your transmitter if your transmitter has got a bnc connector then connect then put one of those connectors on just make sure it's the right one but for now doing this pl259 making sure that that cable is long enough to reach through the center of the connector so once again don't break the cable just uh, roll it on the blade so that you can pull off the plastic and then you're going to have to push back all that braiding once again sped it up so you don't have to watch me doing that but this time you don't have to make a, a single strand because you actually want that all sticking out the end because you're going to push that whole thing through once again now rolling the uh, plastic on the blades so that you can just get the plastic off that center part of the coaxial cable but this time you want to cut it all the way down not not so that the cables touch but just like that so you've got a long piece of the center of the coaxial cable because that's going to go through the connector to the top so what you're going to do is you're going to push it through the base of the PL259 connector and you're actually going to screw this thing on because that screws onto the braiding and it joins on the base. So I've sped this up again and you're going to basically screw it all the way until the center part of the coaxial cable sticks out through the end of the PL259 connector. You can see it's sticking out there. Now what you want to do is solder that and then cut off that excess piece. But you can see on the back the braiding is sticking out. You can tidy that up if you want but it doesn't really matter because it needs to make that connection there. Now my soldering is not the best so hopefully yours is and uh, there's a disclaimer in the description. Be sure you know how to use these things because it is dangerous. But you solder it up nicely and clean it up, cut off the excess, make sure that everything Thing, looks nice clean and tidy and fits nicely and uh, then the important thing is to test the thing because we need to make sure that there's no shorts and that the connections are good so using a multimeter we're just going to do a straightforward connection test to see is it making a good connection between the cable and not shorting out between the center of the cable and the braiding and or at least to the outer core of the cable so you can see there it makes a good connection from the braiding to the base but doesn't connect to the antenna and vice versa so you don't have a short between the center and the outer part of the coaxial cable and so that your antenna is connecting uh, the way it should but without shorting out so you can see the center connects to the center now we're going to be using a glue gun just to uh, tighten up or strengthen up that center part which is a bit wobbly because it doesn't fit in perfectly so once again i sped this up just so you don't have to watch me endlessly sticking glue into the antenna but the whole idea is to fill it up so that it's nice and solid because you don't want that to wobble around because that can also break so make it nice and solid with some glue and then you can also tidy it up once again some good old-fashioned insulation tape just to make it look neat and tidy uh, you can stick that around the top part there just just to finish it off so you don't see all that horrible glue sticking out so now you're almost done but that cable needs to be strengthened we need to stick some glue around that hole there because if that cable gets pulled on it can snap and then you've damaged your entire antenna so use the glue gun again just put lots and lots of glue on there to strengthen it you're going to stick it all over the place and uh, just make sure that that cable cannot pull out because you don't want to damage the cable by accident or damage the thing. And there you have it, your own homemade mobile portable FM broadcast antenna. But be sure to not use this on a moving vehicle, even though it's mobile. Uh, only use it on a stationary vehicle because this thing will probably blow off if you're driving along. So only use it on a stationary vehicle. But there you have an antenna. Now in an upcoming video, I'll be testing out this antenna to see how well it performs. But there you have it, fantastic homemade antenna that you can use for your FM transmitter. To find out more about how to tune the antenna, check out this video. To find out more about FM antennas, check out this video.